I am Brooklyn Lee, and I'm the Expo's Female Performer of the Year. I was born in Ohio, um, raised many different places. I lived in Puerto Rico, Kentucky, New York, Pennsylvania, <laughs> Windsor, Canada. I've lived a lot of places, but mostly Ohio. Uh, I was living in Manhattan at the time, was dancing at one of the gentlemen's clubs there. It's fun, it's good money, it's just, it gets old, you know, it's, it's a grind, it's no pun intended. So I just wanted to do something else and I started researching the adult industry. Um, I liked what I saw, um, contacted an agent, flew out here to LA and the rest is history. I still don't really get it yet. Like it hasn't officially sunken in at this point. Um, it's such it's such a big honor, you know. And the competition was stiff. A lot of the girls' friends of mine sitting at the very same table with me, and I was like, "Ah, oh, you're gonna get it. You're gonna get it." And then when I did, I just I was in shock. I, anytime I, I win anything, it, be it the lot or, or a little scratch off ticket or a big award like that, I'm like, really? <laughs> It takes a while for it to hit me. So it's very exciting, obviously, but it still hasn't quite registered, I don't think. So. I think the most obvious thing would be that it's the most hardcore movie I've ever shot and probably ever will shoot. Um, some of it, um, I read some of the reviews and all, although people liked it, some of, some of the content was almost a little too much for people to choke down, but I assured everybody like I, I was fine and you can see in all the BTS that I was fine. It was just, um, it was a learning and growing experience. It's just very, very different. I, I don't even know what else to say. It was just it was very, very intense, especially the scenes with Sandra Romaine and Rocco Sofredi, like madness. So. Yeah, so. I was very happy to do all of it. <laughs> I was just pushing myself. I didn't know how far I could go, you know what I mean? And that genre sort of provided the perfect, you know, time to explore those things, so, yeah. I was really, really, really lucky to be selected to play the lead in the remake, or Vivid's remake, rather, of Behind the Green Door. I think the official title is New Behind the Green Door, they're going with. Um, it was a really, really long audition process. I mean, I had to go back two or three times to meet with them and this and that, and they weren't sure, and they're like, I think it's you, but I'm not sure. And in my heart the whole time, I was like, I have to have this, you know what I mean? Not because I had like a longing for it. I just knew it was supposed to be mine. And I meshed really well with Paul Thomas. Um, we're both super quirky, and that's putting it lightly, you know, so we kind of get each other. Um, and it's hard for me to say that that project is bigger or better than Voracious. It's completely different, but it's definitely no, it's definitely no lower in stature. Like they're like kind of here for me as far as like career defining moments, I think. Obviously no one's seen it yet. I could be way off base. Maybe it came out like shit, I don't know. I really don't think so though. We really put our hearts and our souls into it. And myself and my co-star James Dean, we were those characters for that movie. Like I was this lost wayward girl, which I guess I am to an extent. So <laughs> with that movie, it wasn't so much fantasy based, so I could really pull a lot of emotions that already, you know, live under the service of me. So it was really easy to emote and get through some like really, really tough moments with that. So anyways, I'm rambling. I'm very excited about it. It's slated to be out in September. Um, I think we're going to start promoting in a couple weeks here. Very, very excited. Um, not as many as you would think. I'm very low key when I'm, I'm not at a convention or on set, like my hair's in like a crappy ponytail and I have no makeup on and I'm wearing like dirty sweatpants. It doesn't happen, it's only happened twice. And people, they were very nice about it. They were like, oh, Clinton girl. So it wasn't a big deal. It's predominantly at like conventions and adult things where the people there already know me and they're like, oh yeah, but it hasn't been that bad. Now in the midst of it, when we were in Monaco, everybody was like, everybody knew it's a very small place. So that was a little interesting. I don't care, I love Bill Clinton, it was good free press, I'm not gonna lie, so <laughs> I don't regret it. <laughs> uh -huh. 
first and foremost just being comfortable and as impossible as it may seem um, just really try to forget that the cameras are there not to the point where you're not opening up. James Dean loves to give me shit about that. He's like, Brooklyn, you don't open up enough. I'm like, I'm sorry, I forgot the cameras were there. Sorry about that. But it's really been liberating because I'm so, I mean, my body's not perfect, no one's is, you know? Um, but I'm so comfortable at this point. I don't even care. <laughs> I mean, I try to eat well and do things like that. I don't mean let yourself go and, you know, become a couch potato. I just mean that I'm just very comfortable with myself at this point. So I think people would probably be surprised to learn that I've gotten a lot of confidence from being in the industry as opposed to any like really negative effects. But as far as the sex scenes are concerned, yeah, just being comfortable, being in the moment, and being fearless, but being very, very in tune with the other person. Because some people can handle like crazy, you know, balls to the wall, crazy scenes, and other people aren't really into that. And I never want to push people who are not into like more hardcore things into that because it just makes people uncomfortable. Just being very sensitive, I guess, emotionally helps. What do I know? I don't know. <laughs>